Hi everyone, it's MJ and we're dealing with question 7 from the September 2017 paper and this question deals with two topics combined. We're looking at the moment generating function as well as compound distributions. So this is quite difficult so don't beat yourself up too much if you attempted this question and you got it wrong. What we're going to do is go through it slowly so that you can understand each of the steps. So the question reads as follows. The annual number of claims an insurance company incurs, N, is believed to follow a Poisson distribution with mean lambda. The value of each claim xi from i equals 1 to following follows a known distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared. The value of each claim is independent of the value of any other claim and of the number of claims. Then we have let s equals the sum of the x's which denote the total claims in any given year. Write down an expression. So we just need to write down an expression for the moment generating function of S in terms of the moment generating function of XI. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, I think one very important thing to realize is the formula for MST. So MST is going to be equal to MN log MXT, okay? We're getting that straight from the theory. That is something that we would have learned in the earlier videos, and we should be nice and comfortable with it. Now, what we know, what we know is that N is following the Poisson with lambda uh, as its parameter which means that we know on its own mn, say y, would be equal to something like this. Sorry, y over there, minus 1. Okay, where am I getting this from? I'm getting this from the formula book, which we all should have for the exam. Um, hopefully you don't have to learn it, but if you've been doing stats for quite a while, you will be quite familiar with this as your formula. So that is the moment generating function of the Poisson distribution. But now we have a situation where y needs to be substituted for the log of the moment generating function of mxt. And we don't really know what the distribution of x is. We know it's a known distribution, and it has these parameters, but we don't actually know what it is. But that's not too much of a problem because we know that mn log mx of t, and I'm going to put this uh, expression over here every time we have the y. So we're going to get e lambda exponential log mx t minus 1. I know that looks quite crazy how many steps we're going, but we know that the link between the exponential and the logs can cancel each other out, so we are left with the following. Okay, if you want to know how I got how these two cancel each other out, that is from the mathematics that one needs in order to do statistics at this level. So there we kind of have our, our answer, uh, because we know that this is equal to ms of t, we then know that, yeah, our answer is as followed. We just needed to write it in an expression of a uh, moment generating function of x. So we have exponential lambda mxt minus 1. Cool. And they're only giving you one mark for doing all of that, which I think it's, I actually would have given maybe two marks for that. But we do see that there's a lot of marks here in the second part of the question, which is going to be a little bit trickier. What we need to now do is derive the formulae for the mean and the variance of S using your answer to part one. So we need to find the mean and the variance. And we know the following. We know that the expected value you know, of something is equal to the first derivative of the moment generating function set to zero. And we know that the variance of this is equal to the following. Okay, so we need to bear that in mind while we now come to the second part of the question. So 
part two and what we need to do is take the derivative of our uh, moment, generating, ge moment generating function for s which is the total claims okay so we have moment generating function here of t we're taking the derivative and of those you know when we're taking a derivative with an exponential we're going to bring this over here forward um, and take the derivative of that so we have the following mx of t exponential y y lambda my apologies mx of t minus one okay that is the first phase the tricky part there is taking the derivative of an exponential bringing that term down which I think we should all be comfortable with um, as terms as the maths goes. Then, like we see over here, in order to find the expected value, we now need to set this equal to zero. So if we want the expected value of s, we then need to set the moment generating function, or the derivative of it, to zero, which is then going to give us the following So I'm just rewriting this out again with our zeros here, okay. And this is where the next step is fairly straightforward. We know that the mx of zero is equal to the mean. We've been told what that mean is by the parameter mu. And we also know that mx zero over here is going to be equal to one because in the, in the sense we have that situation which is equal to one. So you need to know what this mx actually stands for to see how that will then get one. That will then subtract, that will cancel each other out. So this part of the equation just goes no and it becomes uh, lambda mu. And that is the expected value. And that is also what we expect the average to be of the total claims to be the average number of claims times the average amount of each of those claims. So that is also intuitive and we're quite happy with that. Of course, uh, in order to do the variance now, we need to get the second derivative. And this is where, I mean, the maths does start getting a little bit messy. Uh, you need to be focused in the exam, make sure you don't make a mistake, but yeah, we're now gonna be taking the derivative of the statement here we have to break it up into the two parts um, so it does get a little bit yeah you'll see it does get a little bit messy but we let's have the second derivative here of our mx exponential lambda mxt minus one so we've taken the second derivative of that now we need to take the second derivative of this part over here and we're going to have y m over here and then what we're doing is because we're taking now the derivative of the second part the second part is this thing here which is the same as this part we're now going to square it so that's where the squaring comes in because we've kept the the one side the same and we're adding on another term which is the same of it and that's where we're getting the square um, and then we have e lambda mxt minus 1. Okay. Like I say, if you are getting confused with this term here, it is because your maths is a little bit rusty. You need to look into some of, you know, differentiation and, and stuff like that. Um, but it's not that, it's not that difficult. It does get a little bit messy. Um, now again you need to concentrate because now we're setting this equal to zero. We're setting this equal to zero and we're going to now see the following. Zero e and once again mx zero minus one plus lambda mx zero squared e lambda mx zero minus one. Okay, so all we've done in this step is replace the t with the zero. Okay, now what does this give us? What does this give us? Well, what we can see is we're still going to have our little 
lambda over there. Here we're going to get sigma squared plus mu squared. Now you might be saying, hold on, where did that come from? Where did that come from? That's coming from over here where we say mx is 0 over there. We're moving this thing to there, which as we know from the top one here, it's the mu. We know that that's sigma squared. So we rearrange that to write that there. Okay, once again, this term kind of dies out because it's going e to the 0 because that equals 1 minus 1 is 0 times that 0, e to the 0 is 1. Cool, done. Then we have the situation over here where we have lambda, and we know that from the previous one, that is mu. We squared that, and once again, that becomes 1, which became 0, which means that becomes times about 1, so it goes and falls away. So we have this, but this is not the answer. This is not the answer. Remember, the variance, the variance of s is equal to ms double derivative minus this one over here squared, which means we have our terms here. This I'm getting straight from over here, but now we need to subtract over here. And oh, look at that, those two cancel each other out, and we have our answer as follows. And ta da, we are done. Like I said, do some more practice if you're like, whoa, what's going on here? But if you still are battling, it's important that you learn the theory of moment generating functions and you do make sure that you're comfortable with some of the mathematics being able to differentiate, especially when you've got multiple terms and you split them up and do your whole little thing. But otherwise, that is, I don't know, I'd say this is quite a difficult question in the exam, although a well-prepared student would be getting all six marks. Anyway, I'll see you guys for the next video and let me know if you've got any questions. Keep well. Cheers.